Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. I've got this, well, pretty cool geometry problem. We've got a square, side length of A, and it's broken into four different triangles. Three of them we know. Two, four, and six are the area of the known triangles, and our job is to figure out what is the area of this red triangle, the big one right here in the middle. I think this is really appropriate for people just kind of learning how to do, how to do these kinds of challenge problems. It only involves well, some high school level math, but that doesn't make it entirely easy or obvious. So if you'd like to try it on your own, go ahead and pause the video and try it now because I'm going to dive into how I'm going to do it here in just a minute. You can do it along with me and, well, we'll hang out, do some math, have a good time. Are you ready? All right, here's what I'm going to try. Uh, I think it's a really good idea when you're doing these kinds of problems to just brainstorm instead of trying to figure out stuff right away. So I have to find the area, and it's a triangle. So I know I've got a couple of formulas for area. I want to have base times height. Well, that's a right triangle. This one is not, so no good there. One half BC sine of A, that could potentially work. Or what if I took the area of the square and subtracted 12? The 12 coming from the three triangles I know. 6, 4, and 2 makes 12. So if I could figure out the area of the square and subtract 12 from it, then what would be left would be this triangle right here. And I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. All right, so now... Really simple, the area of the square, well, since the side lengths are A, that's just going to be A squared, right? So that's going to be our goal. Figure out A, subtract those three triangles, and what will be left is the area of our red triangle right there in the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can tackle this now. All right, now let's call this little distance right here D to E. Let's call that X, and let's call B to F 2X. And maybe it's not entirely clear why B to F is double the distance, so let's take a look at these two triangles right here. One-half base times height is, of course, the area formula for a right triangle. And in this case, the heights are both the same, right? They're both the length A, which means that uh, the purple triangle's base has to be twice as big because everything else is the same, but the area is twice as big, so the base is twice as large. All right, so I know that that's going to be 2x. So let's go ahead and put that back in context of our big picture. All right, now 12 is the sum of all of those triangles. So that 12 right there, that's the 12 is the sum. That's why we're subtracting it. And let's go ahead and write an expression for each of those three triangles. So 2 is 1 half x times a, and then 4 is 1 half 2x times a. And the 6 right here is 1 half base times height. We need to come up with some expressions for the base and the height. Well, since we have already said this is a distance of A from D to E, and from D to C is, sorry, we said D to E is X, and D to C is A, that means E to C is A minus X. And we could do the same thing over here. A minus 2X is F to C. So I know that the triangle with the area of 6 is going to be 1 half base times height. My base and height are a minus 2x and a minus x. And there we go. I know those whole things right there sum up to 12. All right. So let's go ahead and simplify this little thing right here. Uh, go ahead and square that out and replace it. So those three things added together make 12. Let's go ahead and get rid of the fractions by multiplying all of our parts by 2. And we're going to get 24 is equal to those three things. So let's go ahead and start to set that up as an equation. Right? Now, let's combine some like terms. The AXs, I've got three of them, and I'm subtracting three of them. So those all cancel out and make zero. So my equation is 24 equals A squared plus 2X squared. All right. Almost home sweet home. The trick here is we've got one equation and two variables. So let's see. Well, since we're going to try to figure out what A is equal to, let's see if we can write an expression for X. Let's use the little triangle over there, the one with the area of 2. The area of 2 is equal to 1 half base times height, and the base is X, the height is A. So I can go ahead and solve that, right? Multiply both sides by 2, divide by A. Now I know what X equals. X is 4 divided by A. So let's go ahead and substitute for X, square it, and... Go ahead and multiply 2 times 16 is 32. All right, so now, cool, we have one equation, one variable. 
Let's go ahead and clean it up so we don't have a denominator. Let's multiply all three terms by a squared. And we get 24a squared equals a to the fourth plus 32. And, man, let's go ahead and subtract that 24a squared to the other side. And here's what we've got. Now, that's not quadratic, but it's quadratic form, so we can use the quadratic formula to solve for a squared, which is what we're looking for anyway. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers, right? And then 4 times 32, we subtract that from 24 squared, we get 488, and it turns out 64 goes into 488 seven times. Square root of 64 is 8. We can do, reduce everything up there by 2, and we're going to have only the positive number because we're subtracting 12 from this number right here. So this number has to be more than 12 because we're talking about an area, right? All right, so now we know what a squared is. So we just have to plug that into our little expression we started with. a squared minus 12 is the area of the red triangle right here. So we'll go ahead and just sub substitute those things in. 12 minus 12 is 0. We're left with 4 times the square root of 7. I think that's a really cool problem. I think it's really appropriate for people just kind of learning how these things work. I hope you had a really good time doing the problem. I know I did. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.